place up there. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you both online and in person to this time of worship. We're thankful for those of you in the sanctuary and for those who are online. We hear from you and we're grateful you are there, those of you online. Those of you who are here and all of you online make up Ocean Heights Presbyterian Church. We are a church when people gather. We are grateful to have this opportunity and this space to come together. We are a progressive Christian congregation southern this, serving the southern part of New Jersey. God continues to lead us and open us in new ways. For those of us in the building, while social distancing and masking rules have been relaxed, we ask you to be respectful of those around you as we pass the peace, gather for fellowship, and education after worship. We are continually updating our website, ohchurch.org, and invite you to visit it regularly for the latest information and how to contact the office or make an online donation. The weekly bulletin is posted there for our online worshiping community. And now Art has a, an announcement. One of several, but Art's the first. Only one, only one from him, okay. Good morning. Good morning. That was good, all right. I have a, a minute for stewardship that I wanted to share with you. As we are all well aware, Ocean Heights Presbyterian Church is heading into exciting but anxious times that are still filled with questions. Will we have a full-time pastor? Will we have sufficient funds to pay for the right candidate? Will our church be alive and vibrant in five years, ten years? The answers to these questions are an emphatic yes, yes, and yes. These goals will not be realized by any single committee, rather with the ideas and support of our entire congregation, we can accomplish anything we set our minds to doing. So please stay tuned for more information in the future about how we can work together to make this vision a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Art and Sharon Eaton and Barbara Bennett, I believe, have an announcement. Or should I say exciting news? <laughs> Well, we have the pleasure to announce a new member today, um, Hillary Grote. She comes to us. Here she is. Yay! She doesn't, she's a little shy, doesn't want to come up front. Um, make sure that you welcome her after church. She comes to us with her husband, whose first name I don't know, Dan and her son Logan, and her daughter Savannah. So be sure to welcome the family at our After Worship Fellowship. So last Sunday, Hillary attended the Ocean Heights Presbyterian Church new members class. And this morning, she met with session members where we voted unanimously to accept her into membership into our congregation. She is joining us, as Barbara said, by reaffirmation of faith. Hillary wanted to return to church so that she and her children, Savannah and Logan, Savannah and Logan, could you stand up? Thank you. Hillary wanted her children to learn more about Jesus and God, and she herself was interested in growing in her faith. Both Savannah and Logan attended Vacation Bible School, and I hear it was really good that you loved it, so we were so glad that you could attend that. 
It was Hillary's husband, Dan. Dan, could you stand up? <laughs> Thank you. Who, who said to Hillary, listen, if you're going to go back to church, why don't you try out Ocean Heights Presbyterian Church? Because I see that they're really inclusive. So she's here as a new, the newest member. Hillary is a nurse practitioner and will be starting in that role in a dermatology practice in the near future. Hillary, we welcome you to Ocean Heights. We look forward to worshiping and working with you in the life of this church. And as Barbara said, I hope all of you will greet her at our reception um, after church service. Thank you. Welcome. Let us continue our worship. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. God's spirit is at work in us, so let us rise in body and spirit and call each other to worship. Let us join with the angels at the stairway to heaven. We praise our awesome God. We are standing on holy ground. God is everywhere, always to be adored.
I love yellow roses. <laughs> they were my mom's favorite. So I don't know what it is about water. I mean, it brings us back to our beginning, both life on earth, all came from the water, um, the waters of our mother's wombs, and we just were mostly water. <laughs> just, we also remember the waters of our baptism and how we said yes to God, or our parents said yes to God, acknowledging that we are God's people, God's children, God's family. The other thing about water is, you know, there's no separation. You have to put it in a container to be separate. And really, that's us, right? Like, we don't think of it like that because I see you, 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 you. But really, we're part of this greater spirit that's God. And we come now to confess our separation from God and from each other. But let this water remind us whose we are, and that we're all part of each other and our glorious God. Please pray with me. Holy One, we humbly ourselves before you. Reveal to us any hidden deceit, resentment, or unacknowledged wounds. Help us examine our hearts in your loving, healing presence. Please heal us, free us, and mold us into the people you want us to be. True reflections of your light and love. Amen. Let us acknowledge to one another the light and love of God within each other. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Will you pray with me? God, source of all light, by your word, you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit 
that our hearts and minds may be open to new understanding and wisdom. Listen to these words of scripture, Genesis 28, 10 through 17. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he passed the night there. He took a rock and used it for a headrest and lay down to sleep there. During the night, he had a dream. There was a ladder standing on the ground with its top reaching to heaven, and angels of God were going up and coming down the ladder. Yahweh was there, standing over him, saying, I am Yahweh, the God of Sarah and Abraham, and the God of Rebekah and Isaac. Your descendants will be like the specks of dust on the ground. You will spread to the east and to the west, to the north and to the south, and all the tribes of the earth will bless themselves by you and your descendants. Know that I am with you. I will keep you safe wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will not desert you before I have done all that I have promised you. Then Jacob woke and said, Truly, Yahweh is in this place, and I never knew it. The liturgist um, copied, is missing a line. So, uh, Jacob woke and said, Truly Yahweh is in this place, and I never knew it. He was filled with trembling and said, How awe-inspiring is this place. This is nothing less than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. We're going to, let's do the, this is a very short song, number 406. So if we can go sing it through three times. come up and I want to say that I'm quite sure that the mistake in the liturgist copy was mine. So, just want to make that clear. Okay.
so gorgeous. This is a gorgeous quilt, isn't it? Both sides are beautiful. All right, come on. Oh, perfect. Let's see. There you go. I got Milo and Savannah and Ethan and Logan. Have a seat. Let me grab these too. Um, so we heard this story. And I, I did try to get a picture of it, but I didn't kind of like the picture. So I want you to imagine Jacob is in the desert. He puts a stone like a pillow. I guess it's this way because this would be kind of hard. But anyway, has a stone for a pillow. And he falls asleep and he has a dream. And in the dream, there's this stairway to heaven. This just and angels are going up and down. And then he hears God say, Jacob. I will be with you always. And he says some other stuff too. But then when Jacob wakes up, he goes, oh, this is the gateway to heaven. God is right here with me. I didn't even know it. This is sacred ground. So the thing is, God is always with us, right? Did, maybe you know, I don't know if you know that. You probably know that. God is always with us. God is with us everywhere. God loves us. There are angels. We can't see them. People that loved us and went on to, to heaven, they're with us. My mom, those yellow roses, I know she's here. <laughs> There's, they're with us. But sometimes when we, especially like when we go to bed, like Jacob did, he went to bed, sometimes you got some kind of different kind of feelings, right? I'm kind of curious, you ever, it's like I remember being little and sometimes being afraid in bed, or you might have a bad dream or something. Do you ever, does anybody, I mean, yeah, go ahead, Savannah. Um, can I give this so you can, so people can hear you? No, you, you can just talk. Um, I had a bad dream about um, a sheep. Want to try to take my bed? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, the, is your sheep trying to take your bed? I know, like, there are some scary things. That's why I don't watch scary movies, because I don't want to put scary images in my head. Um, does anybody else have, like, things like that? Or does not have to be like that? Or you have to tell me anyway. But anyway, so one day, one night, I'll never forget it, my friend Gina... She'd always tell me these scary stories. This girl in Italy, this did that and that. And, I go, oh. and so I'd lay in bed and be afraid. And then one day it occurred to me that God is stronger than everybody. Anything that could hurt me, God is more powerful. And God is with me and God loves me. So I just have to pray. And I would pray and my fears would go away. So I just, oh, so I can say that, but I thought maybe this would help. <laughs> so see if you can, does anybody, can anybody tell what, uh, here, everybody get one, you're going to take it home with you, okay? Um, can any, my husband said, I don't know what that is. I said, okay, that's good. Maybe it makes a little challenge. Um, can anybody tell what that is? This is a better picture. Some of them came out of lines. Can anybody tell what that is? It's like a horse. What? A bear. A bear. Thank you. I said to my husband, even the computer knew. It's a bear lying on a blanket. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway, yes, it's a little bear. That's my teddy bear, one of many. <laughs> and he's like sleeping. Not, yeah. Um, and, the, and does anybody want to read the, the top? Ethan or Logan, do you want to read the... or? Yeah, go ahead. Hold on, hold on, hold on, stop everybody in here. Okay, here you go. Um, in peace I lie down and sleep. For you, Yahweh, my, my God, keep, keep me perfectly safe. Thank you. And that's from Psalm 4, number 8. I once made a pillow with that on it because I have a friend that has narcolepsy and she has trouble sleeping. And I just wanted a blessing because that's in the Bible and it, it reminds us that God is always with us. God is caring for us and just to pray, okay? Is any sheep, 
anything, any, yeah, just don't worry. God is bigger. God is bigger. Okay? Any other things to say before we pray? Okay, hopefully my little bear will help you remember. And this is my, that my blessing for you, for you to sleep in peace. I'm going to, we can, yeah, hold hands. Or, all right, okay. Okay, wait a minute. We, we don't have to hold hands if it's COVID. Is, if there's a, th- is there a co- thing about COVID, whatever. But we can circle up now? All right, circle up, okay. I know, things are different now, right? Okay, do whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, God, thank you so much for these beautiful children. God bless each and every one of them. God bless Milo and Savannah and Ethan and Logan and their families. And God, help them to remember, always remember how much you love them and that you are there for them and that you will always be with them. Help us take their fears away and help them sleep in heavenly peace. (laughs) We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, where's my sermon? It's over here. (laughs) All right. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock, our rest, and our redeemer. Amen. Can you imagine how Jacob must have felt as he left his home to head 457 miles away to a family he had never met? 457 miles, the distance from Beersheba to Haran, or about the distance from this church here in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey, to Cleveland, Ohio. Can you imagine walking that far? I cannot even, well, I can, I've been there, but I know a lot of people cannot even imagine driving that far. If we were to take such a journey today, even on foot, somewhere along the way, with these cities, towns, or even a convenience store or a farm where we might stock up on food or other provisions. But Jacob, did not have the expectations of a Wawa or a ShopRite or even a farm on his route. So he heads out on his journey, and the baggage he takes with him is not just a water jug and some tools and provisions to keep him from starving to death. No. The baggage he carries is the knowledge that he tricked his father into giving him the blessing that was meant for his older brother. We did not read that particular story together this year, but two weeks ago, those of you who are here did hear how Jacob got his brother Esau to give him his share of the inheritance in exchange for a bowl of lentil stew. That was bad enough. But later, between that story and this story, going along with his mother Rebecca's scheme, he pretends that he, Jacob, is Esau, even lies and assures his old and blind father that he is his older brother and receives the blessing that his father thought he was giving to Esau. Now, Some may argue that it was unfair in the first place that the older siblings should get more of the inheritance and a better blessing, or that Jacob was only following orders, his mother's orders, and so Jacob was justified in what he did. And perhaps Jacob did justify his actions by using some of those arguments and others. Nevertheless, he did lie to his father 
And his father was not trying to hurt anyone. Now, Jacob and his mother tricked his father for his own gain, not for the benefit of his father or for anyone else. It seems to me that such deception might cause Jacob to feel some guilt. Also, fear. Once Jacob got the blessing that was meant for Esau, Esau vows to kill Jacob once their father dies, which seems to be pretty soon. So Mama Rebecca comes up with an idea of Papa Isaac sending Jacob off to her brother Laban's home, hundreds of miles away, ostensibly so that he can get a wife that is much less troublesome than the local Hittite daughters-in-law that Esau has been bringing home. But, and this she doesn't tell Isaac, of course, so that Jacob is safely away from the wrath of his brother Esau, a skilled hunter. So Jacob is essentially in exile. He has the added burden of grief, knowing that he will never see his father alive again, and he's not so sure about his mother. He doesn't even know for sure that he can ever come back home again because he feels his brother may never get over his resentment towards him. So he takes off for a journey of nearly 500 miles on foot with all this baggage. Guilt, maybe shame, fear, grief, uncertainty, a long journey ahead of him, not knowing what he will encounter. You may remember what we read two weeks ago, that whereas Esau was described as a skillful hunter, a man of the fields, Jacob was described as a quiet man living in tents. Now, Living in tents in that place and time did not mean he liked to camp out. Tents were for Jacob's people what houses or apartments or trailers are for us. In other words, as I said a couple weeks ago, Jacob was not the outdoorsy type. If it were Esau who had been on this journey, I imagine he would have been more comfortable with the situation. Being a skillful hunter, he may have not have been as worried about where his next meal was coming from, nor that he was going to be the next meal for another creature. Yet, it is when we are most vulnerable, when we have lost what is dear to us, when we are unsure of the future and perhaps even unsure of the past, when we are removed from all that makes us comfortable, it is often during these times and in these places that we are more likely to encounter God. And so Jacob does. The place where Jacob settles down for the night is a little less than 60 miles from where he started out. From Egg Harbor Township to Cleveland, this might be like stopping in Maniunk in Northwest Philly without the Schuylkill Expressway, the Philadelphians, or any other signs of human life. Probably not his first night on the road, but not too long after he left home. This dweller in tents, this mama's boy, lays down under the stars with a stone for a pillow, and he sleeps. And as he sleeps, he dreams. Our scripture says he sees a ladder going from earth to the heavens, but many interpreters say a stairway or a ramp may be a better translation. Whatever he sees, it connects our world with the world of the divine, and Jacob sees angels going up and down the vertical path, and God speaks to him. God gives him the blessed assurance that God will be with him wherever he goes, and that God will bring him back home safely, and that this land will someday be his family's land, and that he will not only have descendants as numerous as the dust, but that all the families of the earth will be blessed through his family. And again, God promises Jacob that God will not leave him. Jacob wakes up and exclaims, Surely Yahweh is in this place, and I did not know it. 
shaken, he says. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. I think Jacob's encounter with God can teach us a few things about our own gateway to heaven. First, notice that Jacob did not earn or deserve this heavenly visit. God comes to Jacob despite the way he treated his father and brother. When I was reading this story, I kept thinking about a conversation I once had with a child in vacation Bible school. We went over one of the scripture verses we were learning. God saw that everything God created was good. The child said, except bad people. I tried to explain the difference between doing bad things and being bad, as in being inherently bad. I said that nothing or nobody that God creates is inherently bad, because all that God creates is good. As the saying goes, God don't make junk. Well, at least while I was with her, I, the child never did grasp what I was trying to say. And I think at times it's hard for us to understand or accept this as well. Sometimes, especially when we feel guilty or inconsequential, we just cannot accept God's grace, even when we can totally believe that anyone else other than ourselves is forgiven or worthy. Now, of course, there are those who can believe that they are forgiven and, in, and or inherently good, but that others are beyond redemption. But either way, it is sometimes hard for us to grasp that we are all valuable and precious and cherished in God's sight. Now, despite this blessed assurance from God, in the future, Jacob will still have to come to terms with his past. He himself will be a victim of trickery. And later, he will struggle with God in another nighttime encounter that will leave him physically wounded. Years down the road, he will have to humbly and fearfully face his brother before he can truly come home again. But notice, he does not have to get his act together before he meets God and accepts a relationship with God. God meets him where he is, warts and all. It's like what we say here in this church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. That's true of this church, but it's also true of God. God meets us where we are. We don't have to make a profession of faith, have everything figured out, or give up all manner of depraved or disagreeable living before we can begin to say yes to a relationship or a deeper relationship with God. We just have to be open. We don't even have to be wide open. God will squeeze in even the tightest places. The gateway to heaven can be as small as the eye of a needle, but there does have to be an opening. As I said before, often it's when we're in a new place, a sad place, a scary place, that we're most open to God. These are not often situations we consciously choose. They are oftentimes circumstances we are unhappy to find ourselves in, and yet they can become blessings in disguise. Sleeping is another way we can be open to God. It may sound strange, go to sleep and find God. But the Bible is filled with stories of God breaking through human consciousness through dr dreams. And it makes sense. In our waking life, we're so preoccupied with our thoughts, especially our thoughts about the past or the future, that we unwittingly make it difficult for God to break through to us in the present moment. God may just have to wait till we're asleep. If we do have a dream that seems important, we might want to jot it down as soon as we wake up. We may get a message from it, or we may not. But if we don't write, type, text, audio record, some way record it, we're likely to forget it. Whether it's from God or our own imaginations, we'll never get the treasure it might yield if we just ignore it. And along these lines, it's not just when we're sleeping that God can break through to us. 
as we get ready to fall asleep or just start waking up, we let down the guard of our egos and be open. And once awake, before the rest of our day floods our minds with thoughts and to-do lists, we can devote the first conscious hour to just being with God, or however long. However that works for us. For me, a key part of my prayer time is centering prayer, which is Christian meditation. It it consists of mainly being in the presence of God quietly for 20 minutes. If 20 minutes of silence seems like a long time, you can try it for one minute the first time and two the second day and gradually keep increasing your quiet time. And you could do it during the day. It doesn't have to be first thing in the morning. But for me, if I don't do it first thing in the morning, I end up not doing it. I have found that this practice of being in the present moment with God helps me daily feel God's great love for me. And experiencing that unconditional love helps me to have more compassion for everyone else and myself. Like Jacob, we may find it easier to sense God's presence in certain places. For most of us, the closer we are to God's creation, the closer we feel to God. Working in a garden, walking on the wooded grounds like those behind the church, feeling the cool breeze in the morning, hearing the birds call to one another, watching, watching the ocean waves, smelling honeysuckle, or tasting watermelon, gazing into the face of a beloved person or pet. We can experience the sacred by marveling at the exquisite beauty and wonder of creation which should also make us that much more committed to taking care of this entire wonderful web of life that we're a part of. There are many gates to God, but the most basic is just being open and available. Surely God is in this place, and I didn't even know it. Eventually, Jacob does wrestle with God. Eventually, Jacob does have to go back and face his brother. But in today's episode, Jacob has the assurance of God's presence and blessing. And this is not something he earned or deserved. He was just open. And so may it be with each of us. Amen. Well, let us speak. Uh, oh, excuse Okay, let us speak our uh, commitments. Um, rise in, in body and or spirit. Okay. By the grace of God, the people of Ocean Heights Presbyterian Church, a member of the congregation of the Presbyterian Church USA, gather for worship. We joyfully welcome people from all walks of life, acknowledging the differences of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disabilities. We celebrate all people as children of God. As a progressive Christian congregation, we endeavor to understand and practice the faith we have from Scripture, informed by the wisdom of silence and the theological and cultural diversity of the world's people. We give thanks to God for the community we share in worship and ministry for the sake of a world where love is more possible. So we um, come now to the time in our worship where we lift up 
prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Concerns and celebrations, however you want to put it. I'll start with what I have here, and then if you have something you want to add, just raise your hand. We are praying for Alana uh, Can Canfield in the hospital. Canfield? Okay. Uh, prayers for the pastor nominating committee. Prayers for the Barnhart family and for Ellen Clemens, who has brain cancer. Are there others? It can be celebrations, too. Well, I will celebrate um, Hillary's joining us today. Yes. And, oh, yes, yes, Sandy. Peggy Whitaker, who lost her husband. Peggy Whitaker, who has lost her husband. Thank you. Bur Burrow's, Burrow's family? family. Okay, Burrow's family. They lost their, their mother. They lost their mother, okay. 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 Let us pray. Holy God, loving creator, we lift up these people who are in need of healing, peace, relief from pain, comfort, compassion, all the things that they need, we lift them up to you. God, and not only these people, we lift, lift up those with ongoing health concerns that we don't want to necessarily say over and over, but we just lift up all those members of our church family and also in our hearts um, who are grieving or challenged by concerns, both physical, mental, emotional. God, and not just this congregation, those we love and those we don't even know about. God, we lift up people from all over the world. And we lift up our governments. We lift up anyone that has anything to, make, to, to do with protecting our planet protecting the life in our planet, wars. We lift up all those people who are struggling in time of war, abuse, trafficking, all the ways of human inhumanity to humankind. We just lift up all of, all of our sisters, brothers, siblings on this planet. We lift up this planet the animals, the creatures, the plants. This is such a beautiful, amazing planet that you have made us a part of. And we give you thanks. But we pray, please, please protect it. Help us do a better job of protecting it. And give us all peace. Help us all feel the joy that is you, inherently you in our hearts and our souls. You who love us beyond all imagining. We thank you so much for being with us. We thank you for this church family. We thank you for all those we love. We thank you for new life, new hope, for all that is good. We pray all this in Jesus' name, and we pray the prayer that he taught us in a slightly different version. Amma, Abba, how deep within you are, how high above, how far beyond. Your name be hallowed. Your new creation come. Your way be followed everywhere. Give us bread enough for today. Forgive us for the wounds we have caused. And help us forgive those who have wounded us. Do not let evil exploit our weaknesses. But let your grace heal and free us. Your love sustain us, and your spirit guide us. May you always be in the word. And now um, we call for the uh, people to come up with the offering. And just remember that you can also give online. You can make a regular, it's very, very, very easy, call the office to make a regular donation coming out of your bank account. It's simple, and it can be changed if it needs to be changed. So please. Please give, because as um, Art said, 
And as Jeff preached a little while ago, you know, we need, uh, we need offerings in order to continue. So thank you. We give you thanks for these gifts, the gifts of our offerings, but also the gifts of our talents. God, thank you for Andrew and Hira, for their beautiful music, for all the beautiful gifts that each of us bring to this church family and to our wider human family, God. Bless these gifts that we offer before you in these containers, but also these containers of our lives. God, bless and use us. Use us individually and corporately as a church family to be a blessing in your world. Thank you for blessing us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
listen. Okay, two things. One is that the, after the benediction, Betsy is going to share something with us, so please hang tight. And the other is just, I mean, even though the choir is not singing, you can hear their voices just, oh my gosh, like making it sound like we're all this great, big, awesome choir. So thank you. Ah, go forth from this day knowing you're connected to God and God is awesome. Be filled with that joy, that light, that love of knowing we're all connected, all of us. Be blessed, sisters and brothers, siblings. Be blessed, all of you and all, all of us are blessed and take this blessing with you. In the name of the Mother, the Father, the Son, and the Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.